Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the quadrant chart. The quadrant chart is used really to show a distribution of data or a distribution of your values in four separate quadrants, which is what you're kind of seeing on the screenshot on the right hand side. It does allow you to customize really labels you have anywhere in the chart. So you can actually label each of the quadrants, quadrant, quadrant one through four, you can rename. You can also rename the X and Y axes here as well. Now you can also see in the screenshot, you can even adjust where the different quadrants begin and end. So here I've kind of adjusted and I've made it so that my values actually start at 360 as opposed to the middle point where they started off at. And that gives you the really the ability to customize and interact with the quadrant chart in a more appealing way where I can actually split things up a little bit better. You can also display up to three measures on this and you'll notice that it's not so different from using something like the scatter chart inside of the regular Power BI desktop. One of the differences here though is that it does not have a play access. So there's no play button you can hit on this to actually animate the chart. This is just gonna show the data in that more quadrant view here. All right, so this one was developed by MAQ. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you can use the quadrant chart and an example together. All right, so to get started, we're going to go pull in some data. We're gonna be looking at some NFL data, so National Football League data for this example. And to do that, I'm gonna go up to the Get Data section here and select Excel. And we're gonna pull in NFL Offense data. So I'll go ahead and select NFL Offense and then hit Open. And then it's gonna prompt us to select a spreadsheet that we wanna use. So I'm gonna select the Stats spreadsheet that's part of that workbook. And then I'll hit Load. Now for this example, as we go ahead, goes ahead and pulls in that data into our data model, you'll see that now appear over on the field list on the right hand side. And what we'll do next is we'll go ahead and pull in the quadrant chart. Now the quadrant chart can be pulled in either in the visualizations pane on the right hand side where you see the ellipses and you can hit the little import option here, or you can pull it in from the top ribbon where you see the option to pull in custom visuals either from a file or from the store. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it in from the store because we can just search for it. And we're gonna search here for the quadrant chart. So I'm just gonna search for quadrant and you'll see the quadrant chart appear. So I'll go ahead and add the quadrant chart and then it will appear in our custom visuals pane over here, our visuals pane on the right hand side. And then I'll hit okay to have that ready to go. Now to use the quadrant chart, you'll go ahead and select that and bring that onto the design surface. And we're gonna make this take up basically the entirety of the screen here for the most part. And we're gonna place a couple of the fields that we have on this visual. We're gonna start by placing in here the team field. Now these are different NFL teams for National Football League teams. So if I select team, you'll notice that it automatically puts it into the legend section. And that's based really based on the data type. If this had been a, uh, a value that could be aggregated in some way, if it was an implicit measure that could be aggregated, you would have likely seen it been added to one of the other three options here. But because it's text, it knows that this is probably something we wanna split up and have a separate dot or a separate bubble in here for each of the values. And so that's why it's placed this underneath the legend axis. All right, next we're gonna take a look at actually bringing in some of the measures that we have. So we're gonna start by bringing in something like the yards per game. We'll put that underneath the X axis. We'll uh, then bring in something like for the Y axis, we'll bring in the total points right here. And then finally, we'll make the size of the bubble or the radius of the bubble be based off of the penalty yard. So the total penalty, penalty yards here, we'll go ahead and select that as well. And so you can see a very slight difference in the size of the bubble will kind of appear here now once we make that change. But what we do see here is it looks like we have a nice four quadrant chart here where most of the values have all been placed in the top right quadrant. And the reason that is because there's not really any auto adjusting here for the chart. The chart doesn't automatically adjust and actually do something like skip a bunch of values in the beginning. It actually does, follows the best practice here and starts at a zero and goes up the, the standard increments here. So that's best practice as far as visualizations go to always start at a zero and then work your way in standard increments rather than trying to jump ahead and go straight to the data. The good news is if that's not what we wanna see, we can actually work with and adjust the chart here to fix that a little bit. So say for example, we wanted the, the chart to actually start at the 360 mark right here uh, and uh, the, the split, the vertical split up here there, maybe the, ver the horizontal split to appear somewhere in the right, uh, same, similar area on the vertical axes here and the horizontal axes, I mean. Then we can go underneath the format paintbrush and underneath the format paintbrush, you can look underneath the quadrant section and underneath the quadrant section, you can do things like change where the split point is. So you can see where the division line actually occurs is right now, it's at the, on the X axis is at 240, on the Y axis is at 280. And so what we can do is we can come in here and we can say, well, let's actually go ahead and switch both of these to 360. And you'll notice when I change it to 360, that the division line actually shifts over quite a bit 
it's about in the middle of all of our data points. There's still quite a few on the right, the left hand side, but it's a good middle point there. And then our y axis, we can do the same. I'm actually going to make it the same value even. And you can see it's kind of got a nice split there between the values that we have now. Now you'll want to look at that a little bit more closely. You don't just make some random guess. You know, think through the data. What do you actually think is considered a higher top right portion of your data? The thing you'll also see that you can do here under the quadrant section though is you can rename the quadrants. So I can come in here and I can rename each of these. And rather than you watch me type, I'm going to copy and paste these names in here. I can call this my quadrant one can be high points and high yardage. Okay, so you can see that renames right there. I can rename quadrant two to something like high points and low yardage. And I'll go ahead and bring that in here. And you can see quadrant two will be renamed whenever I paste that in. So this is a high number of points, low number of yardage because my x-axis is the yardage here. And then I can go to quadrant three. Let's call that low points and low yardage or low yardage and low points like that. And then finally, quadrant four is going to be high yardage, low points. Okay, so I've kind of gone through and renamed each of these quadrants. You can see there that I automatically renamed it after I changed it in the format area here. You can also change the line here, the division line. If you want to switch that to a dotted line, you can flip that on here and you can see it makes it more of a dotted line if you prefer that as opposed to the solid line. All right, so that's the quadrant section. Let's go back up to the legend though. I skipped the legend. Let's go up to the legend section here. You can certainly do things like change the font size of the legend. So maybe I want to bump that up a couple points to 10 point font. You can also do something like maybe you get rid of the title if you don't want to have a title. If you think it's pretty clear that these are teams, you can get rid of the title there if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it on. And then you can also shift the location of the legend as well. So maybe this would make more sense as a, maybe a left legend or maybe a right legend. That's up to you. You can really kind of shift that around to wherever you prefer to see those values, the, the legend, I should say, to appear in your chart. There's a lot of other areas you can actually move it. So I could make it left center. You know, it's already so many values there that it's not going to matter whether or not I have it centered. But uh, you have some flexibility there as far as how you make the legend appear on this chart. All right, so that's the, the legend. The underneath the X axis, you can see there's a few things you can do here. You may want to change the text title. So right now it's just called X, but you can come in here and call this something like yards per game. Okay, like so. And you can see it's renamed the X legend down here on the bottom. You can certainly do things like uh, change the units of measure shown on the bottom. Right now it's very clear units of measure, so no need to change that. But you can change the decimal points. You can turn off the labels if you wanted to. You can turn off the the text if you want, the title if you wanted to. So if I turn off the title, that goes away altogether. If I turn off the labels, you'll see that those numbers now disappear. So that's up to you how you would like to make that appear. All right, now going down to the Y axis, this is very similar here to what we saw a moment ago. The Y axis, though, you can change the title here as well. So I can call this something like total points. And then you can, again, same thing you had in the X axis. You can turn off the labels if you wanted to. You can also change the display units. Finally, underneath bubble colors here, you can actually have some customization to the colors if you wanted to. So if you know there's certain colors for each team, like the Arizona Cardinals, well, they're typically red. I can go in here and I can adjust them to red. Baltimore Ravens are typically purple. I can come in here and adjust them to purple. Carolina Panthers are kind of like, like, like a teal, almost like what Chicago is showing us here now. So you can go through and adjust each of the colors on these if you wanted to very easily. Now, there's nothing to really make these colors dynamic. You have to kind of go in through here and change each of them on your own. But uh, you do have the ability to do that with inside of the format paintbrush area. Okay. All right. Other than that, the last few properties that you see in here are ones that you see typically in every one of the visuals where you can turn off the title, perhaps. Maybe I don't want to see the title because it's kind of clear what I'm seeing here. You can change and add a background color if you wanted to. So if I turned on background, I can come in here and kind of change and give it a background color if I wanted to and make the transparency a little higher if I wanted to. So you do have some flexibility there. I'm going to turn that off though. You can change and lock the aspect ratio. So as I adjust the size of this, that it sticks together then in that uh, aspect ratio that we started off with. You can add a border around it and you can just kind of change the general position of it here if you wanted to as well. So that's it for this quick one. The quadrant chart's pretty simple, but it's a nice way to be able to visualize and show that information in a four quadrant chart. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and look forward to showing you our next custom visual and our next module.